Hi, I'm Dr. Nixon with Healing Peak Regenerative Medicine, and today I want to talk about quality assurance with supplements. It's something that comes up a lot for me in my practice, and I just kind of wanted to reiterate it. I've made some videos about this in the past, uh, but that information is sort of uh, bundled into other uh, videos. So I just wanted to make a direct video about quality assurance. And the, the, the issue with vitamins, because they're not regulated by the FDA. So, I mean, the FDA has its own issues in my opinion, but outside of that, the whole point of them is so that they can regulate things and make sure that they're safe for people. So, um, basically supplements don't have a regulating body. They're considered a food and so um, they're kind of regulated in between being a food and in between uh, being a medication and they don't really have a, a body that's like governing, governing what, what they can put in them and what they can't put in them. And there are some very liberal guidelines, I would call them, that, uh, that don't really hold the supplement maker to any type of quality assurance. And so that's kind of the first part of quality assurance I want to talk about is actually the brand itself and how the supplements are made. And then the second part is who's distributing them. And so the first one is, you know, you're going to get what you pay for. If you buy the cheapest supplement out there, um, you're likely not going to get a very good product. Uh, those types of supplements are meant to be made in high quantities very quickly. And typically those supplement companies and brands are going to use uh, fillers and binders um, in the actual capsule itself so that they don't have to clean their machines as often because cleaning the machine takes manpower. You have to take the whole machine apart and clean out herb product, um, which can, you know, plant products can gunk up a machine. But if you put the binders in there and the fillers in there, then you don't have to clean the machine as often. You can make a lot more supplements a lot more quickly, but they won't be as effective. And then the other question is, you know, what kind of binders and fillers are those? If it's rice, you know, rice is hard, high in arsenic, um, all over the place. Like, you know, rice in and of itself is high in arsenic. So a lot of these supplements you'll see rice is in there. Why is it in there? You know, why are they putting rice filler in there? You'll see caramel coloring. You'll see words you can't understand or repeat that look like a chemical. Uh, these are not high quality brand supplements. And especially if you're bargain shopping supplements, you know, it's not a good idea. You get what you pay for. And you may actually be putting more harmful things in your body then, then you realize all because you're trying to save a buck, right? That is, you know, I, I think it's really good to be, you know, investing in your health and taking vitamins and supplements, but know what you're doing and know what you're buying and know what you're taking. Because if it's something you're doing every day, you're going to want to make sure that that's a healthy thing that you're doing, right? And so it's not really the best to try to save money when you're purchasing supplements. And I, I don't mean to say that you need to buy the most expensive brand out there, but do your research, you know, or get a healthcare practitioner that knows, you know, how to prescribe these or can offer you some guidance on what brands are high quality and what brands are not. Um, and educate yourself on, on how to decipher high quality versus, you know, low quality vitamins. The other thing I will talk about today is who you're buying your supplements from. So if you buy your supplements from a supplement shop or a grocery store, they are not allowed to sell doctor prescribed brands because they do not have doctors on staff. And so they can sell still some really high quality um, vitamins and supplements from some brands that have made a line for grocery stores and made a line for practitioners, but they can't sell quite a few very high quality, essentially prescription supplements. So that's really important to understand and know that uh, there are a couple places, you know, if you go to a compounding pharmacy in your area, um, compounding pharmacies, because they have pharmacists on staff and pharmacists are doctors, um, they can sell the doctor prescribed brands. And typically they're, you know, over the counter, they're sitting in like a shelf or whatever, just like you would buy in a supplement store, but they're much higher quality brands because they have a pharmacist on staff. And the other thing you can expect from a compounding pharmacy when you buy supplements from a compounding pharmacy is that those people care about whether or not they're selling a high quality supplement to 
the patient. And they are going to um, hold the supplement and contain the supplements in the correct ways. So like fish oil should be in the fridge. Not all probiotics, but certain probiotics should be in the fridge. Um, there's, you know, they'll, they'll follow the expiration dates and make sure they're not selling um, expired supplements to you. You know, they, they're making sure that they're buying from a distributor that sells the supplements to them and then they're selling them to you. But along that entire process, those herbs and supplements are being treated correctly. Any oils like flax oil, um, evening primrose oil, fish oil, um, vitamin D in oil, all of these things all of these oil-based products should be refrigerated and often are not, um, especially fish oil, flax oil, and evening primrose oil. And there, I mean, those are just examples off the top of my head that I can think of. But oils, they uh, they oxidize quickly, and then they become, you know, the more oxidized they become, the less efficacious they are, and the more harmful they can be to your body. So it's, you know, it's probably not as harmful as taking something that has chemical additives in it, but it's definitely not what you paid for. And so anytime you're buying supplements from Amazon um, or Costco, they don't have any quality assurance. They don't, they don't have any quality assurance in like none, um, negative zero. Uh, they, there is no protocol they follow. It's a huge conglomerate. They're probably not, I mean, I have no idea, but I'm just speculating they're not even aware of these quality issues. Although many articles have been written lately specifically about Amazon and supplements. I've had patients come and tell me they bought the same brand and the same thing off Amazon, but it wasn't the same as the one that they got from my online dispensary. Um, and so I really encourage my patients to either buy directly from my online dispensary because I trust it and I know you know, that that company who is distributing it, it, it to them is, you know, holding their supplements and the way that they, they contain their supplements, either refrigeration um, or, you know, where they're getting it from, making sure they're fresh products to the patient, right? Um, and so then I know that my treatments are working or not working because I know that they're taking the thing that I prescribe them. Um, but when patients get them from places like iHerb or... Um, some, you know, discount website, you know, I have no idea if what they got is what is, was what I prescribed to them. And so that's why, you know, I, I understand supplements are expensive, um, but you got to look at it like medication. And the, if you're buying inexpensive supplements or supplements that are not a high quality brand, or that were not treated properly from where they came from to you, to where you put them in your mouth, you know, you may as well flush that money down the toilet anyway. I mean, you're, you're essentially wasting the money that you thought you saved. Uh, so I really encourage you to look at your supplements and vitamins and nutrients like medicine. You want to make sure that those are high quality. No one is, no one is policing those for you except for you. And I think that that's the most important thing to get, you know, to really let settle in your mind is that if, is that you are in charge of how high quality or not quality your vitamins and supplements are. No one is doing that for you. The FDA is not doing it for you. Amazon is not doing it for you. Um, Costco, not doing it for you. Super Supplements, any of those companies, they, although Super Supplements and Vitamin Shop and stuff are, are better than other discount um, online vitamin shops, but... But none of these people, you know, they don't care and that you want to really buy from a place that you know you're going to get the highest quality thing with the least amount of fillers and excess ingredients that are totally unnecessary in your vitamins and supplements. So try not, I mean, I know that they're expensive, like I said, but understand that they're a medication and that you get what you pay for. And if you try to save money, you may be buying something that's not going to work at all, in which case you shouldn't even try. So um, there are ways and there are certain things that you can do to make these types of purchases more cost effective. And I always work with my patients in trying to get them the best, you know, available products for the least available cost to them. Um, but there are some vitamins and nutrients out there that are just expensive by nature and it's important to spend the money on them. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Have a great day.